island of Hawaii was built by five huge volcanoes, the highest of which towers almost 30,000 feet above the ocean floor. Here is the story of how the island was formed. Kilauea is currently the most active and probably the youngest of the volcanoes. Many of its eruptions occur in its summit caldera, 4,000 feet above sea level. This eruption started in Kilauea Iki, a pit crater separated from the summit caldera by a narrow ledge. This is a hypothetical cross-section of Kilauea, showing what geologists have learned about its structure. It consists of a great pile of lava flows built upon the ocean floor. Molten magma, which becomes the lava of the eruption, originates about 35 miles below the Pacific Ocean and gradually moves upward into the crust of the Earth to accumulate within the volcanic pile beneath the summit caldera. In this greatly exaggerated sketch, we see how the pressure of this newly introduced magma inflates the summit area preceding the eruption. Magma breaks through first as a summit eruption in mid-November 1959, making a lava lake in the mile-long crater of Kilauea Iki. After this early phase of eruption stops in mid-December, more magma moves laterally along a rift zone, presumably connecting with underground pockets of molten material left from previous eruptions. It finally breaks through the surface as a flank eruption at Kapoho in mid-January. Some of these flows reach the ocean. This great drain of magma from beneath the summit area allows the volcano to deflate. And by mid-February, the ground surface subsides as much as five feet. The fountaining of lava ceases and the eruptive cycle is over. For some time prior to the eruption, a seismograph nearby registered numerous small earthquakes. Then at 8.08 in the evening of November 14th, the earthquake ceased abruptly as the summit eruption started from a half mile long line of fissures, halfway up the south wall of the 650 foot deep crater Kilauea Iki. Within an hour after the outbreak, cameras were set up about a mile away to obtain these photographs of lava fountains spurting to heights of 50 feet. They feed a number of braided lava streams that pour down more than 300 feet to the bottom of the crater, where they coalesce and begin to spread across the floor. The flat 37-acre floor of the crater, formed by lava extruded in 1868, is rapidly covered by the new lava. Sparkles of light dancing over the lava are burning trees carried along by the flows. As they move across the floor, they break through their own cooler margins, forming lobes. During the next two hours, the fountains increased to 100 feet high along the entire half-mile line of fissures in the crater wall. These lavas contain less than 50% silica and cool to form what are called tholeite basalts. The hottest lava is bright yellow-orange. As its surface cools, it becomes dark red, although it's still very hot inside. By 10.30 p.m., fountaining declines at the outermost vents, but they continue to glow, and many emit gases that burn with pale yellow-blue flames. Large bubbles of rising gas in the vents cause vigorous splashing of the lava over the edges. Before sunrise, the main fountain is 100 feet high and looms above trees that have been stripped by heavy masses of lava spatter falling through them. sunrise, only two fountains remain. Lava from them flows down the narrow trough in the west end of the crater, cascades over a steep bank, and on into the deeper part of the crater to the left. 
the main fountain builds itself a small spatter rampart. Still later in the morning, the lava lake has spread to the forested slopes. During the extrusion of lava, seismographs in the vicinity record an unusual type of motion of the ground called harmonic tremor. Scientists of the Geological Survey's Hawaiian Volcano Observatory prepare to collect gas and lava samples at the base of the fountain, now only 200 feet away. Sulfur dioxide fumes and intense heat radiation make such sampling difficult, but these samples aid in interpreting the origin of the magma and the mechanism of the eruption. They may help also in understanding the origin of the atmosphere in the oceans, as vast quantities of such gases have been given off by countless volcanoes over the long span of geologic time. Lava rivers flow down the steep slope, with one on the right flowing along the former Kilauea Iki Trail. Through the second day, more and more lava pours from the one remaining fountain. Sudden fluctuations in the output often cause the entire cascade leading into the deep part of the crater to be awash with lava as it flows down the slope and under the crust in the ever-deepening lake. On a fairly steep slope, the lava forms vigorous rapids over irregularities in the channel, breaking apart floating pieces of cooler crust. Although flowing like water, this lava actually is a highly viscous fluid. Here, the lava plunges over a steep cliff, forming a lava falls. On a smooth slope, the lava river appears as a bright, incandescent ribbon flowing at speeds up to 20 miles an hour. The flow is fastest in narrow channels, where the channel widens, pooling of lava occurs. The river of lava winds down the valley through natural levees of its own making. It splits and recombines around barriers, much like water in braided river courses. As the stream pours into the rising lava lake, it flows under the chilled but still flexible crust, floating it upwards. The fountain continued through the night, sometimes suddenly showering new portions of the crater slopes. Through the first six days of activity, the fountain has continued to grow to more than 10 times the height of Niagara Falls. It forms very strong air currents and more and more pumice and cinder, which the prevailing trade winds blow to the lee of the vent, building up a large pumice and cinder cone on the crater rim. By the end of the eruption, the top of this cone will be 400 feet above the level of the vent. Viewed from the southwest during a temporary lull, the cone obscures the eruption and only fume clouds can be seen in the background. Seen from the air at late sunset, the massive orange 800-foot fountain sends hundreds of thousands of cubic yards of lava per hour into the rapidly filling lake. Here, just prior to the end of the first phase of the Kilauea Iki eruption, the fountain shoots 1,000 feet above the surface of the lake. Although this appears to be an exceedingly violent eruption, geologists actually consider Kilauea to be one of the least violent active volcanoes on Earth and hence most suitable for close study. Obstructions in the vent may suddenly divert the jet causing devastation of large areas surrounding it. The week-long first phase ended abruptly when the level of the lava in the lake reached the vent and about 40 million cubic yards of lava filled the 140-acre lake to a depth of 335 feet. Following a four-day period of quiet, 
fountaining resumed from a slightly higher elevation in the former vent area. Some of the 16 subsequent eruptive phases, which ranged in duration from 2 to 32 hours, started very abruptly. The fountain in this phase rose from 0 to 700 feet in a few seconds. brings many visitors to the park where they view nature's spectacle from a safe distance. This is necessary as changes in the direction of the jet take place suddenly. Here the lake has covered the vent and cooler material is carried as high as 1,200 feet. Many of the 17 phases of this eruption started with a massive bubbling in the lake over the vent. This spasmodic, geyser-like sequence of eruptions, separated by periods of quiescence and backflow, had never before been observed in Hawaii. After massive boiling and bubbling in the vent area, the activity would gradually increase to form a strong fountain playing hour after hour. Although this appears to be shown here in slow motion, it is not. The lava is actually falling hundreds of feet directly into the fluid lava lake at the base of the fountain. This fallout and disturbances at the vent form waves that spread out over the lake surface. Thin jets of lava rise up 30 feet above the surface as heavy fluid masses of spatter the size of bathtubs hit the lake.